My name is Umar Ashraf and I'm from an award winning company called iCafe in Glasgow. We are quirky uh, yet stylish uh, coffee houses and internet cafes. So today I'm here to raise uh, £80,000 to help me launch uh, our fourth unit, which will be our flagship store. In return, I would like to offer 30% of the overall business. Over the last three years, we've won many awards and in 2011, we increased our turnover to £548,000. I also started on our franchise package, which we are halfway through. So with your help today and my energy, enthusiasm and passion, I would uh, like to take uh, iCafe to a new level. Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, would anyone like to try some of our products or perhaps a coffee? I'd like to try a coffee. Sure. Coffee and cake. 27-year-old Glaswegian Uma Ashraf clearly aims to tempt the dragons into investing in his independent cafe chain. He needs £80,000 to help fund both his flagship store and franchise plans in return for a 30% stake of his company. That's a good brownie. Theo Pafitis is first to question the hospitable businessman. Uma, all looks very good. Thank you. Tell me how it started. I've always loved business since I was very young. Like, you know, my parents tell me stories. I was eight year old selling friendship bands in school and had an online business uh, aged 14, selling mobile phone accessories. And eventually like an opportunity came up and um, uh, I was approached by a, a, a big company to, and they were interested in a domain name and they offered me 250 pounds. And uh, I was going through my standard grades at the time, you know, wanting to see what university I want to apply to and, and everything else. Right. Bottom line is you flogged it. I you don't have to milk this. We can actually get to right. it, you know. <laughs> so I ended up selling that for £18,500. OK. So um, iCafe actually was my final year university project and I had to come up with a business plan. And then once I graduated, I went over to the bank and I said, look, I would like to open this. Have you got a site? I said, actually, I do. So you started when? Uh, 2005, I started. And then in 2006, I looked at another unit. Okay, so 2006, yeah, you opened six the second one. was a second one. Oh. And um, the third unit opened in 2010. Yeah. Uh, the third one has a coffee to go at the front and our central kitchen in the back. It is actually a support unit designed so Ooh, it can... Oh, is this a, it's just a coffee shop, isn't it? Coffee houses, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there anything special about this coffee shop? Yes, well... well let me let, I'd, I'd like to finish my fingers, but I'm losing the will to live. Well, I'm sorry, you can answer a few questions with a bit of luck and then you can lose the will to live personally with him. So, this year... You're going to turn over what? Uh, £596,000. Profit will be seventy, And I'm wanting to franchise it out, and that's, that's, that's what uh, I'm here for. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Franchise. Fantastic. Verbose or just nervous, Uma's certainly made an impression in the den. But it looks like Peter Jones is eager to get straight to the point. OK, you've got three units at the moment. Each, let's say, makes about 20,000 a year profit. Uh, yeah, net profit. Is that fair? A year. Uh, yes, yes, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you want to take that model and turn it into a franchise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm a franchisee now. What do I have to pay you to open up that coffee bar? Um, it will cost a total of uh, 109,500. That okay. includes. Okay, the... that's great. Yeah? So for 110,000, I get from you a business that can make 20,000 a year. Now, I don't know what day you were born on, but I wasn't born yesterday. That's not a very attractive offer, is it? I agree with you, absolutely, 100% agree with you, but what I would like to say is that people who are wanting to open up a cafe on their own actually probably make a loss. No, you but you're, you're not getting the point. It's not a good deal. Uma. I don't know why you're agreeing with Peter when Peter says the shop only makes 20,000. You have two shops and your projection this year, 70,000. So 70,000 between two shops is 35,000. Three, three, three shops. Three shops. No, two shops. The third shop is not a shop. It is the a shop. The third shop is a little takeaway and a distribution depot. So you've got to take that out. Yes. In fact, the third unit made around 1,600, just right. over 1,600. So practically nothing. Profit. Okay. 
So I suppose the question is, do you seriously think anyone would pay you £110,000 to buy one of your franchises? Yes, two guys have been very interested in doing so. And based on the first year, they'll make £35,000. Not for the first time, the rival investors are divided about the attractiveness of the proposal on offer. Can Deborah Meaden make sense of it all? Hello, I'm Deborah. Hi, Deb. Um, who are these people with £100,000 to spare? OK, one of them uh, is a manager for uh, an electronics uh, How much do you store? think he's earning? Because he's presumably got £100,000 in the bank. How much do you think he's earning? We haven't got to that stage. Uh, do you Deborah. think he's possibly earning more than maybe £30,000 a year? Um, I wouldn't know that, Deborah, because we, we Well, haven't. if he is earning £30,000 a year, you're offering them the opportunity to give up their secure job give you £100,000 to put it into a risky franchise for the ability to earn slightly more than they're earning at the moment. Now, when I put it to you like that, does that sound like a good proposition? OK, but parts of that I don't agree with because franchisee would be requiring only funds of around 40000 The rest is through Lombard as leasing uh, and... Put, all right, say £40,000 in the bank. You've got to think, who is this person who's going to take my franchise? I don't know, Deborah, because I... I well, you I need to, because that's your market. So you need to be able to imagine that person. At the moment, I'm struggling. OK. I feel that I have to um, defend, really, my position here. I've worked very, very hard to uh, standardise all the systems for iCafe, but our franchise package is not ready, so I can't serve a half-cooked dish. Omar. I truly believe it will Omar. go forward. The truth is, you've got to think, why would people do this? Who's that person? Where do I find them? And what I sense is that you are quite busy batting off the questions, but not listening. I won't be investing, so I'm out. It's a first blow for the passionate entrepreneur as his franchise model receives short shrift from Deborah Meaden. Will Theo Pafitis take a different view? Uma, you've come in here with a model as to whether you want a franchise, whether you're going to open stores. You haven't come in here with a business plan. That's why at the moment you are uninvestable. So I'm out. Thank you, Theo. Uma, you have done incredibly well to create a business that makes money. But what you've done is you've stepped out of reality into a world of complete and utter fiction when it comes to business. You have no business that can possibly be franchised. This is totally uninvestable, and I'm out. Um, thank you, Peter. Right. May I speak? Absolutely. And if I do so... Have you listen? You're the boss. You guys are the boss. Right. To franchise something, you've got to have a USP. You've got to have intellectual property to something. And you've got to have testimonials that what you've got makes money and is temptation to somebody looking for investment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you're not demonstrating that. Uma, I couldn't work with you. But that doesn't mean that I don't respect you for what you've achieved, because I do. But Thank I you. can't invest, Thank so you, I've got to say, I'm out. Strong words from the three dragons. Now, only Duncan Bannatyne can save Uma from complete disaster in the den. OK, you know, I don't totally agree with Hillary. Um, I've got a very successful franchise company that doesn't have all the things that she said. Um, but you said you couldn't sell a franchise because you couldn't sell a half-cooked dinner. But you've got a cooked dinner. Yeah. The you've got two cooked dinners. Yeah. Why don't you try and sell one of your existing coffee shops as a franchise? Uh, cash flow, uh, Duncan, because straight away my cash flow will go from 100% down to 6%. No, it won't, because the day you sell it, you'll open your new shop. 
So you could have your new shop lined up ready to open, sell a franchise in your existing shop, and then open a new shop. With the track record of what the... But when you're selling your track record, for. and you would prove to yourself then whether or not somebody was willing to pay that money to buy the franchise. Very good advice. Thank you, Duncan. Well, you've got a business, and you've got a business making a profit of four to nine thousand pounds. Yes. And was that before you took wages out? Uh, no, no, no. After my wages. After you After took your wages, wages out. I take out twenty-seven and a half thousand a year. Got to make you an offer. I think you'd have to promise me that you would talk a lot less. Yes, I will try my utmost best. I want 49% of the company for £80,000. It's not negotiable. Can I take a minute? I would like to very much accept your offer, Duncan. Good luck. Thank you very much. Uma's done it. We're going to do well. We're going to make a little fortune. You and I. It only takes one dragon investor to buy into your dreams, and he now has an experienced multi-millionaire business partner.